What is up everyone? My name is Ken, also known as Wiltshire. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we will be having a look at and making some changes to my modified Dell Optiflex gaming PC known as Optiflex. Now, if you aren't familiar with Optiflex, there is a playlist that I've made and I've documented me modifying, making changes, doing performance upgrades, benchmarking, the whole nine yards inside that playlist for Optiflex. So if you are curious to know more about Optiflex, I recommend watching that playlist before watching this video. With that said, I'm going to recap the performance upgrades I made in the previous video. So in the previous video, we threw in an, a Dell Optiflex 7070 MT motherboard, paired that with an i9-9900, paired with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and now we have an RTX 3060 Ti inside Optiflex. This has been pretty much my daily driver for a little bit now as I've been testing things out. And after about 10 hours of gaming and editing, I noticed that the temperatures were starting to climb inside Optiflex. The i9 is known as being a very hot chip. It's very well known for being that. To try and mitigate the temperature problems, which were the high 80s, low 90s in terms of Celsius, so that's a problem, I've gone ahead and bought some like fan cooling options that hopefully will fix the problem because I spent a lot of money on them. <laughs> now, the fans that I've gone for the radiator are the Noctua NF A9 by 14 HS-PWM fans, the Chromax editions. My goodness, Noctua, you need to figure out your model names, man. This is a mouthful, but these fans are like the granddaddy of fans. Noctua makes the best cooling fans on the market. They're just really expensive. These are $25 a piece. That really hurt to pay for these. So I have two of these guys and they're on the 645 LT in a push-pull configuration. Hopefully that will be able to cool the i9 down a little bit more. And for some fresh air on the inside of the computer for the 3060 Ti and obviously the i9-9900 and the liquid cooler, we've gone ahead and thrown three Noctua NF A9 PWM fans in the front panel just to keep the build uniform and looking nice and obviously we want some nice fresh air. And again, these are the Chromax editions as well, and they came with vibration dampeners that have different colors that you can use to match on your build. So there was blue, black, green, white, yellow, and red. Those are the fans that are going inside Optiflex. Now with all the powerful parts here, power supply becomes an issue. So I currently have a SF 600 watt power supply from Corsair in there, and 600 watts is actually below the recommended power supply wattage for the 3060 Ti, uh, which is 650 watts. So what we've done is we bought a Corsair SF 750 watt power supply. This is a 750 watt SFX power supply. And I'm going to upgrade it today in today's video as well, just to give things a little bit more juice and just to make sure I'll be able to throw in a, di a different graphics card in the future inside Optiflex when they come out. So a few other changes that I made for Optiflex, which were mostly internal changes and a few on the outside of Optiflex here. When we bought the 7070 MT motherboard, for whatever reason, it actually came bundled with an M.2 Wi-Fi card, which was a nice bonus. Having Wi-Fi built in is a lot better than using the USB Wi-Fi dongle that I had inside Optiflex, or rather on the outside of Optiflex. So I ended up having to buy Wi-Fi antennas and the antenna leads. I also bought PCIe brackets, drilled a few holes in it, and then we now have a nice looking Wi-Fi set up on Optiflex. And I went with really tiny antennas to kind of keep the physique of uh, Optiflex intact so we got really tiny tiny antennas on the outside which i thought were really funny also the really tall antennas get in the way of plugging stuff in on the graphics card so the uh, tiny ones definitely have another benefit to them too as for the outside of the case and the rear io so to fit the 7070 mt motherboard inside of the 3040 case that i originally uh, modified i had to cut the rear io because there's no io shield on the back of this case it's just holes cut into steel so, and the rear I.O. is different on the 7070 MT motherboard than it was the 3040 motherboard. So I ended up having to make some rough cuts on the back and they don't look the greatest. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to make a kind of like a vinyl sticker that will cover up my bad cuts and just keep the ports exposed so you can still plug things in and out of them. And uh, that is just gonna clean up the build a little bit, I think. The last upgrade that I did on the inside of Optiflex is I'm not sure if you can see it here, I'll do some B-roll footage was I ended up changing the logo on the front of the water pump for the Asetek 645 LT. I swapped that out with my own logo. I cut that out by hand using some matte finished vinyl and then I threw my W logo on there. I used that with my Cricut machine 
and I think it turned out really good. So uh, that is just a quick upgrade, more of an aesthetic change really. Uh, so let's get into the performance upgrades and then we'll do some benchmarks and we'll have a look at the temperatures and, and the gaming benchmarks as soon as we're done all the upgrades. So with the upgraded parts finally in OptiFlex, we're gonna hop into Windows and do a few more optimizations. Now, the default fan curb, the Dell sets for these motherboards inside the 3070 and the 7070 is just, it's awful. The, that's the best way I can put it, it's terrible. I don't know why they've set a fan curb so low. It legitimately doesn't ramp up the fans until things are overheating. So unfortunately, Dell does not allow me to change the fan curve inside the BIOS of the motherboard. So we're gonna have to use a piece of software in order to do that for us. So what we'll be using today is Hardware Info 64 in order to set our own custom fan control uh, fan curve here. Uh, I used to use this program to control my fan speed manually, but now I've figured out a way to do it automatically. So I'm gonna hop into Windows here and I'm gonna show you guys how that's done with Hardware Info 64. So as you can see, I've got Hardware Info 64 already open and we're gonna open up the sensors tab here by clicking this fan icon here. Now, as you can see, I already have a active profile already set for my fan, uh, fan curve here. So if we go to the custom auto button, this will bring up our fan control lookup table. And the sensor we're gonna be using is the Intel Core i9-9900 enhanced sensor. And then the temperature source is gonna be the CPU package. So this means our CPU fans are gonna follow the temperature of the CPU package. Now, if we go down to the temperature lookup table here, as you can see on the left-hand side, we have zero degrees, 30, 40, 50, 70, and 80. Now, for whatever reason, the motherboard only has three fan states. It has zero RPM, 1000 RPM, and 3900 RPM. So 3,900 RPM is definitely a little bit loud. So we're only gonna use that when we really need to. So I've set the computer to always run with a 1,000 RPM fan speed, which is really quiet with the Noctua fans actually. So it will run with 1,000 RPM up into 40 degrees Celsius. Once we cross over to 50 degrees Celsius, this is when the fans will ramp themselves up as fast as they can go in order to keep the i9-9900 in check. So we've also set the uh, intake fans with a similar fan curve profile. So we click on the custom auto profile. We're also gonna follow the same uh, sensor and temperature source as the CPU fans uh, for the intake fans. I've got them set up pretty much the same. So once we cross the 60 degree mark, this is when the fans are gonna ramp up. The fan header for the intake fans is a little different from the CPU fan, which is a little odd. Uh, it only has three fan states as well, zero RPM, 800 RPM, and 3300 RPM and we'll ramp those up once we cross into the 60 degree territory so we can keep things nice and cool. So that is our fan curve profile that we've set with um, Hardware Info. But there's one thing that you needed to do in order to make this automatic once you boot into Windows. So if you right click on the system tray icon for Hardware Info 64 and go to settings, you always want to minimize sensors on startup and you want to have auto start enabled. If you do not do this, then Hardware Info will not set it to automatically turn on when you turn on Windows. There is also another setting that we have to do. We have to add a fan control command line inside of the uh, .ini file for Hardware Info. So if we go into our computer, go into the C drive, go to program files, and then find the Hardware Info 64. And then we open up the Hardware Info 64.ini file. We just need to add this little command here, which is open fan control min equals one. So this is going to automatically open the fan control panel and automatically minimize it as soon as we start Windows and Windows will automatically take care of the fan curve from there with Hardware Info 64. So that is how we set our custom fan control curve for uh, the Dell Optiplex motherboards using Hardware Info 64. So with the fan curve control out of the way, we're actually going to get into undervolting the 3060 Ti. Now, as I was upgrading things, it dawned on me that I actually have never tried to undervolt this 3060 Ti, which could have solved so many problems when it came to temperatures, so many problems. So we're gonna get into undervolting the 3060 Ti with MSI Afterburner as the program we're gonna be using. Again, all the programs are gonna be linked in the description below of this video, and they're all free, so you guys can go ahead and mess around with them yourselves uh, if you wanna try it on your uh, Optiflex or 3060 Ti. So let's hop into MSI Afterburner now. I have MSI Afterburner already open in the background here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the power percentage as 100%. Temperature limit is gonna be 83 degrees. We don't wanna go any higher than that. 
Um, our core clock is just set with the fan curve, but what I started out with is I typed in minus 160 on the curve here, and our memory clock megahertz is gonna be plus 900. So if we hit Control F on our keyboard here inside MSI Afterburner, it will bring up the voltage frequency curve editor. Now I've set all the uh, curve here, and we started at 925 millivolts, we brought that up to 1987, and then we've leveled it off there for our uh, frequency editor. So you can definitely change the frequency here. So I recommend staying at 900 to 925 millivolts. It wouldn't go any lower. Your GPU might crash if you do. Uh, so all you have to do is drag the dots up and down to the frequency that you want to try and achieve at 925 millivolts. So that was 1987 for me, and that is what I'm going to try and stick with with the 3060 Ti. And we're going to see if that actually helps with the temperatures on the 3060 Ti and the i9-9900 when we're gaming. So I just got done playing a few games of Apex on Optiflex with the undervolting and the upgrades that we made to Optiflex today. And the short story of it all is it performs great now it's fantastic to say the least it actually boosted to almost two gigahertz with our undervolting and the gpu was just so much better in terms of thermals uh, same with the cpu the cpu is well in line now uh, the noctua fans do a fantastic job i would recommend noctua fans for pretty much anything that you do trust me you won't be disappointed with paying that premium for the noctua fans so let's get into the results of playing Apex for about 20 minutes now. I have hardware info open as well as MSI Afterburners. So we're going to have a look at the thermal data here as I had them running in the background when I was playing Apex. So if we look at hardware info for the GPU, our hottest GPU temperature was 71.3 degrees Celsius. That is fantastic. Uh, that is definitely a lot lower than the 80s, the upper 80s I was getting before. So if we scroll up to the CPU, let's have a look at the CPU temperatures here. So our hottest core was 73 on core 0, core 1 was 68, core 2 was 71, core 3 was 71 as well, core 4 was 73, core 5 was 71, core 6 70, core 7 was 68, and our CPU package temperature was 70 degrees Celsius as well. So that is awesome to see. That is awesome to see. I am so happy with those results. Like you have no idea. It actually boosted to almost two gigahertz as well on the 3060i being undervolted as well. So that is great performance. I was running the game at 1440p and uh, things were just running really great. It was really smooth playing Apex. I was very happy with the results and uh, I had the over on screen overlay uh, going on there as well. So if you guys wanna have a look at the uh, data while playing Apex, you can also have a look at the upper left hand corner of the screen uh, for a little bit more information on everything. Um, but I'm very happy with the upgrades that we made to Optiflex. I should have done this so much sooner with the undervolting and, and swapping the fans out and everything like that. So lesson learned, don't buy budget fans and cheap out when you have a really small compact computer. You're just gonna pay the price. Uh, so I recommend the Noctua fans absolutely for anything that you do when it comes to cooling. They're the greatest fans ever. Uh, they are expensive, but it's very worth the premium in my opinion. But uh, that's gonna wrap up the video here today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna see any more like this, uh, any more content or videos like this, I recommend hitting that subscribe button and that like button. I'd very much appreciate that, guys. My name is Kendall Simmons Wiltshire, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys. See you later.